Sure. Hi, everybody. So, so thanks for coming today. We have a really um, intriguing event that's organized by Ed Morris, who's the author of this amazing book featured in our exhibition downstairs. Um, I'm Ellen Lupton. I'm curator of the exhibition, I, uh, which is organized by Cooper Hewitt, and we're really happy to have it here on Governor's Island, which is just an amazing venue. Um, and I'm not going to say too much, um, but I'm going to pass it on to Ed. Um, what you'll see behind me are posters from his book and posters by young designers made here last weekend um, in a workshop inspired by his book. And we sort of put that up here to keep our own minds moving about design. Um, and what's going to happen is a live design experiment. Um, this event is webcast, um, so anything you say or do may appear um, to the world. Um, it won't be held again. Ne never, never. So, um, so anyway, thank you all very much, and uh, and thanks, Ed, for putting this awesome thing together. Okay, so um, we're this is like an experiment. We're gonna play a game of sorts, um, but it's a game that I think does real work. Um, that is, we're gonna design a poster for 350.org, um, and we have the co-founder and executive director of 350 right here. Um, before we get into the game and before I give you the rules of the game, um, I want to set the context a little bit um, uh, because it's, it's, this event is about designing a poster and doing this real work of designing a poster, but it's also, there's a deeper subtext which is thinking about what, um, how the environmental movement today can improve. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of ossified and become kind of a niche concern, and the problems are much more broad than that, and I think require a much more broad-based support. Um, so, so before I introduce the panelists even, um, I'm just gonna give a short uh, presentation, I suppose, um, about 15 minutes, about where I think the environmental movement has kind of run aground and what I think graphic design or the areas of graphic design could step into and improve. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm an artist. Um, I, I founded a, a group called Canary Project about six years ago um, that makes um, art and media that aims at fostering like a contemporary ecological consciousness. And this Green Patriot posters is one of our projects. Um, okay, so if you look at the environmental movement uh, up until now, and including now, um, it's primarily concerned with protection of purity. Um, and this is a, um, a, a, a bias or an impetus that has deep roots. It, it has deep roots in romanticism and transcendentalism um, and its expression in paintings like this by Albert Bierstadt. Um, We seem to have lost our ability to advance. Can you just advance the slide? Yeah. Is it that drive that got disconnected? Okay. So posters actually don't really play a role in the environmental movement um, until the late 60s, um, or at least a primary role. The primary um, mode of imaging or imagining the environmental movement that had impact are photographs like this by Ansel Adams. And this is basically taking that, um, that notion that you find in the painting, um, where nature is this kind of pure, uh, separate than man, grand place where you go to find religious ideals, um, and, and brings it to bear on a photograph. And Ansel Adams, um, that's fine, you can stay there. Um, and, and Ansel Adams um, had a very direct uh, impact on the environmental movement. He worked with Sierra Club, and they made coffee table books like this one that they either passed around to decision makers or gave to the general public. And that was extended later by Elliot Porter. So, so photographs are really the main means of imaging, and photographs in particular that capture this kind of um, uh, vision of pristine nature that we want to protect. Um, okay, you can advance this slide. So around 1967, uh, or so, late 60s, posters began to become very popular. Um, and Life Magazine, Newsweek, New York Times all ran these articles on poster mania. This one was called The Great Poster Wave. Um, and, and the environmental movement uh, stepped into that phrase. So next slide. Um, 
and started making posters that were speaking to uh, uh, contemporary culture, pop culture, et cetera. And, but the same kind of ideals are now being symbolically related. Um, so uh, here you have um, a poster again by the Sierra Club. It's by Stanley Mouse, who did all the Grateful Dead design. Um, and it's an image where you see an, an Indian and he's kind of glorifying in this sanctified place. So again, the message is we're, we're going to protect this pure and special place. Okay, next slide. And that's then extended to the whole earth. Um, so love your mother, and Mother Earth becomes the image, so, so that the earth is the precious thing that we're trying to protect. Uh, next slide. So even as the paradigm in the environmental movement moves from uh, conservation, that is protecting land, to pollution, which becomes the main thing in the 1970s, particularly with the creation of Earth Day, it's still the same idea. There's something clean, there's something pure, and we have to protect it. Okay, next slide. And this is extended, of course, to animals. And here this poster is kind of combining um, this um, evocation of, of primitivism, which is now sort of taboo or verboten, with, with animals. Um, and then, so it's the next slide. So you can see that in the environmental movement today, it's kind of, they're still hanging on to these, these paradigms. It's all about conservation, protection of purity. Um, and, and there's a suggestion now that you can do this at a fairly cheap price. You can, you can act and feel good about it. Say for $15, you can protect nature. Um, uh, the, the, the photography has returned. This is kind of dominant uh, way of expressing nature. The animals have gotten more congenial and more friendly. But if you look at the next few slides, they're basically the same. This is NRDC, and the next one is Greenpeace. So you can see this great similarity. Um, now, the environmental movement has had tremendous success, and, and it's worthwhile celebrating that success. So that first wave focus on conservation resulted in national forests, and then the Wilderness Act of 1964. The wave that was focused on pollution, we got the Clean Air Act and the Environmental Protection Agency. So the it's not that the environmental movement hasn't been successful. It's been tremendously successful. The problem is those successes were now more than 30 years old. Um, and the, move the, the organizations haven't really moved on from that. And that's represented in the way that they visualize their movement, the way they brand themselves, the way they, they, they think visually. Um, so, uh, so next slide. So, so we found a Green Patriot poster, as the Canary Project did, as a way to um, contribute or act as some catalyst to rebranding or rethinking um, how the environmental movement presents itself to the world so there's not such a niche interest, so it's not conceived as a luxury, so that it's more integrated into people's everyday lives and it's seen as more of an urgent concern. Um, so uh, the first, so in, and in order to do that, we didn't start with, uh, for our inspiration, we didn't start with looking back to old environmental posters, which we found um, by and large unhelpful and full of kind of cliches that we didn't think we were going to go any further. We looked instead to, uh, for inspiration to a different source. So the next slide. We found inspiration in World War II posters, ironically enough. Um, in particular, for, for two primary reasons. One is that we found that the World War II posters did a really excellent job of valorizing individual action, so your own action, within a collective framework of some sort. So you felt like you were participating in something larger than yourself. Um, th they did that in part because they evoked the image of a crisis or a, present, a very present concern. Um, the other, just flip through these slides actually. So the other reason we liked uh, these images um, is because they made concern with the environment, even though it's not position that way, concern for the environment, a part of your everyday life, about making a garden in your backyard, um, about not traveling, uh, about saving your scraps, and so on. And they, they personalized it and made it heroic. And it's really fascinating that all these things that they're advertising are completely relevant today. So when we launched Green Patriot Posters, we, we first did a bus ad campaign with uh, Michael Beirut from Pentagram. We have Natasha here from Pentagram today. Um, using some of that same kind of impetus. Um, and, then, and then we started soliciting posters from, from various designers. This is from Christopher Neal. This is a direct evocation of some of that WPA type imagery. Um, next, the ubiquitous Shepard Ferry. Um, Will Etling, who works for Good Magazine, who is a, a partner of the Canary Project. 
Um, this is Diego's. It's Diego on the, on the computer there. Next one. This is John, John Santos, who I'm going to introduce in a second. Um, next. And Jeff McFetridge, which very eloquently displays the problem. Um, so the, the, the final piece of this story that I want to just get out before I turn it over to May um, to, to start talking about the campaign that we're going to be designing for here today is that when we started this um, project, the Green Patriot Poster Project, we thought of it as a marketing campaign. And I even say that in the introduction to the book, that this is a branding problem, it's like a marketing problem. And I had a real revelation that it's not. Um, I was hired by Environmental Defense Fund a couple summers ago to advise them on how to reach youth better. Um, and I approached it like a marketing problem. I bought in a, a marketing agency that focuses on youth. We got a lot of market polling. Um, but I also interviewed a lot of people. And what came out of that, I found a huge discrepancy between what the market research people were telling us and what some of the people who I trusted most when I was interviewing them told us. People like Bill McKibben, who co-founded 350, or Shepard Ferry, um, or a big hero of mine named Marshall Gantz, who's a professor at Harvard who teaches um, organizing. They were saying that the only way that you're going to sustain an interest in youth is to create a movement, a social movement. I had never even really thought about social movements. I thought social movements were like a thing in the 60s. And in fact, that's what the market research people were telling me. Kids don't protest anymore is the, the thing I got. They're too friendly. They love their parents. They're not confrontational. You know, they're not into it. That was before this, okay? And so last year you had Time Magazine calling out the person of the year as the protester. And we saw tremendous social movement happening due to, due to, due to, due to uh, protests and so on. So, so we started thinking of the Green Patriot Posters campaign as trying to facilitate, be a catalyst for a movement. And that's why we've been trying to link up with 350 or people like them more, more relevantly and, and, and uh, you know, more decisively. So just a few other slides here. So um, one thing I want to keep in mind as we design this poster today is um, Marshall Gantz lays down five emotional triggers that are necessary for any movement to take root and blossom. And these are them. Anger, urgency, hope, solidarity, the feeling you can make a difference. And I found this extremely helpful as I started looking at the poster contributions that we were getting in Green Patriot posters um, in terms of thinking about what work they were doing. I don't think necessarily you can make a poster that does all of them at once, so that would be fantastic. Um, but certainly certain posters do some of this work. Um, and I think that the, the two that are particularly difficult are anger and urgency. That's the ones that liberals in particular have a hard time with. <laughs> um, uh, and those are the ones that I think that's kind of stridency and edge is what I'm hoping we, that we can work on. Um, so next slide. So anyway, that's an example of how I'm sort of thinking about the posters. You can sort of see that fleshed out. Next slide. Um, so, so that kind of social movement making is evident in the, in the project in terms of where we have online submissions, anyone can submit a poster. Next slide. We've done some public advertising um, and we do these workshops with kids and we do things like this. Um, so we're trying to activate people and of course posters are not just about hanging on the wall. I mean, one of the things that made us realize posters are relevant is that they have a virtual life. They get passed around virtually. This is an example of a, of a poster that was just shared a couple days ago um, by a group in Kentucky that supports local farmers. I think this is just awesome. I don't know who designed this poster. It was just submitted on the web. But now we're talking about merchandising and making t-shirts, et cetera. OK. So 350. So we really like 350 because if you compare, just, just looking at their web page, you can see it. Um, their web page is, is, is not about protecting something that's out there. It's about motivating people to solve a crisis, a present crisis. It's international. Um, it's about social media. It's about grassroots. Um, it's just very active. You go to the site and there's immediately ways that you can start plugging in. Um, and, I think, and, and I think it's no accident that, for example, Bill McKibben is now speaking in South by Southwest as a, quote, new environmentalist. I think this is the wave of the future. Um, and this is what's giving it life. So next slide. They also have, a, you know, they're savvy. They have humor, a contemporary irony in their, in their design. And they're also speaking to the issue as an economic issue, as a, as a justice issue. Um, and I think that is what's going to have resonance with people. Next slide. They also protest. This is May putting herself on the line and getting arrested. Um, next slide. 
this is another sign of protest. I ended with this one because I like this, we are greater than oil, and maybe posit that as one of the things we might think of as a tag phrase for as we design the poster. Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to May. Here's how it's gonna work. Actually, I should introduce everybody here. Um, so the way this is gonna work, I don't know if it's, you know, this is the first time we've ever done this, so it depends on you. Um, we're going to, May's gonna give us a brief about a campaign that they're about to start. Sorry. That they're about to start. <laughs> And we're going to try and design a general recruitment poster for that campaign, okay? We're going to start with the tag phrase um, and thinking about what is the words that we want on the poster, what message we want to convey, what's the call to action, um, and then move to the image we want on the poster and then reconcile the image and the words. And we've got an hour or so to do that. <laughs> um, so um, let me quickly introduce the panelist and then May is going to talk and then the panelists are gonna start grilling May and asking her some questions to flesh out her idea, and we'll start evolving that and talking about the text, and that's when I'm hoping some of the audience will shout out their ideas as well. And then Diego and John are gonna just turn that, um, all this talk, into an actual poster live for you to see, at also being webcast, okay? So, it's a lot to handle. We'll see if we can do it. Um, so here's who we have here. Okay, we have May, who I've already introduced. She's the executive director and co-founder of 350, um, which, sh and she'll tell you what 350 is. I'll just leave it at that. Um, we have Natasha Jen, who is, I think, the newest and youngest partner at Pentagram, the venerated design firm here in New York. Um, she does a lot of cool work with 3D imaging and, and very contemporary stuff and has lots of awards and teaches at Yale and stuff like that. Um, we have um, Debbie Millman, who is, a, is the president of the design division of Sterling Brands and the president emeritus of AIGA, so very illustrious panel. Um, she's written numerous books, which I'm not going to enumerate. Um, and she does a lot of work on, on global branding. So she's really a brand strategist and is going to help us think through some of that. Um, we have John Santos, who is the founder and director of Common Space Studios. Um, John uh, is, does a lot of design work for the Canary Project, so uh, we're used to working together. And um, his most recent thing was working with Werner Herzog at the Whitney on motion graphics and sound design for a very awesome installation there, if you saw it. Um, Diego uh, Gutierrez is a graphic designer and art director, also working on corporate campaigns. Um, was a student of mine at RISD who did such awesome design that he's remained integral to the project. Uh, did I miss anybody? That's it. Okay. So, May. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been looking forward to this ever since I heard about it, and now that we've been lauded as this innovative, cutting-edge <laughs> environmental campaign, I hope we can pull this off in an hour. Um, so I'll try and be pretty quick to give the context that everybody needs to embark on the experiment, um, and hopefully not too quick to that it's confusing. Um, but 350, I'll just start with what is this 350 number? Does anybody already know? All right, great. So 350 stands for the safe level of carbon in the atmosphere. And if anybody had to guess what, if 350 is the safe level, what level we're at today? Any guesses from the, from the group? Ding, 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 ding. 396 <laughs> is the response. Um, yes, so what the fundamental message behind what our work at 350.org is, is we've already put too much carbon in the atmosphere. We've already gone too far, and we've got to start scaling back immediately because the problem of climate change is so serious, we've got to stop it in its tracks. And I came into this work as a student because I began learning about climate change and saw it as fundamentally an issue that was going to redefine my future and future for people my age and generations yet to be born. And some of the reasons that it's so motivating are how it is going to affect our daily lives. The, you know, this summer has been a great example of what the future is going to look like with this record-breaking drought in the Midwest, lots and lots of increased frequency and intensity of storms around the world, not to mention breaking temperature records all over the world. So we've, we've gotten a taste this summer of what climate change can do, and it's scary. 
And so what we're trying to do at 350.org is create, and I think you said this very well, a sense of hope in the actions we can take to do something about this. Because we fundamentally believe it is not too late to solve this problem. And what it takes is stopping burning fossil fuels. It's, on the one hand, incredibly simple and basic. On the other hand, it seems almost impossible. Um, and the, the historical analogy we like to use here is the movement to stop the slave trade, which was another uh, engine of the entire economy that people couldn't, uh, many people could not see, yet it was under, undergirding everything we were doing as a, as a global civilization. And a social movement rose up and stopped it and was able to expose that issue as one that ha was fundamentally immoral. And it's actually a great example of a, of a power of an image because one of the catalytic events in that movement was disseminating the photo of what it looked like on a slave ship in the way slaves were laid out on the floor of ships. And that image was circulated throughout the UK and throughout England and eventually throughout many parts of the world. And it flipped a switch for people and they finally said, this has got to stop. So that is, that is a historical example we draw a lot of uh, parallels and inspiration from. So um, that's the basic context about the issue. And the way we work at 350 is we focus on grassroots organizing and mobilizations and a lot of work on creative communications and trying to spread the message about this problem. And our most recent campaign was a, a focused on stopping the Keystone XL pipeline, which some of you might have read about in the news. It w it's a pipeline that would run from Canada through uh, the middle of the country and th out of the Gulf of Mexico and would be refining the dirtiest oil on the planet. And we worked to try and stop that pipeline by focusing on public protest. And actually, I was one of 1,253 people who got arrested at the White House I've never done anything like this before. Like, I don't even speed. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, it, it was a big shift for, for a lot of us. Um, but it, we were able to get the president's attention and ultimately change his mind. And so we see that as um, our big challenge, is how do we create a social movement that can force political leaders to do something different and really get at the industry. So that brings me to the second bit, which is this new campaign. And um, I'll just, how am I doing on time? Good. Okay, so our, our new effort is um, called Do the Math. And it was recently profiled in Rolling Stone magazine. B Justin Bieber was on the cover. It was <laughs> Justin Bieber and Global Warming's Terrifying New Math. <laughs> so, which was, we thought, a great, great comparison in some way. There's some, there's some joke to be made. We haven't figured it out yet. Um, but it was a 12-page article, and millions of people read it, which shocked us. And we were really inspired by the fact that it, so many people took the time to really understand this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys what the math is, and then I think we'll get into the experiment. Um, so our next campaign um, I'll just start by giving you guys the numbers, and then I'll, I'll walk from there. And the, this comes out of, as I said, a Rolling Stone article by um, my friend and 350's co-founder, Bill McKibben, who um, wrote the first book about global warming for a general audience back in 1989, and it was called The End of Nature. Um, and he's been championing this cause since then, but has recently become much more of an activist. So this is what he wrote in this article. There are three numbers that are fundamental to understanding the problem of climate change. The first one is two degrees Celsius. This is the number that scientists have said we need to limit global temperature rise to two degrees Celsius. If the globe heats up more than that, we're going to start to see catastrophic impacts of climate change. To, and we've already warmed the planet one degree. So you can see what happens at one degree. So two, scientists are saying, no way, this is the red line. It's also important because this is a, a number that 
uh, President Obama, uh, Hu Jintao of China, and many, many heads of state agreed to as a, bench as a global benchmark. So it's got some political credibility. The second number is 565 gigatons of carbon. That is the amount of carbon we can still burn and put in the atmosphere by burning coal plants and driving cars powered by petroleum and all the rest of it. Um, 565 gigatons worth to stay below that two degree threshold. So that's the second number. And the third number, and third and final number, is 2,795 gigatons. And that is the amount of carbon that is contained in the reserves of the fossil fuel industry. So that includes Chevron and Exxon and the countries that, that for all intents and purposes are like companies, like Venezuela and Iran and Saudi Arabia. So the share value of all of those incredibly profitable companies is predicated on burning 2,795 gigatons of carbon, which is five times more than the safe level. So unless something changes, we're already completely going past this first number, the two degrees. Um, and this is, this is just simply business as usual. And so what has to change in order to stay below two degrees is to keep 80% of all of that carbon in the ground, which is a lot. So those are the three numbers, and that's why we're calling this effort Do the Math. If you look at those numbers, it doesn't compute that we can somehow burn all of this, but that it's going to basically wreck our ability to live on the planet. So what do we do about this? Um, and our campaign is about getting this message out to people and working primarily on college campuses to get college endowments to divest from fossil fuel companies. And this is an effort that we think will be e economically powerful, but much more than that, it will help present the fundamental immorality of burning fossil fuels. Because students will be going to their boards of trustees and saying, what, you know, my education is being paid for on the premise that we'll just burn all this fossil fuel and I won't have much of a future in 50 years. This doesn't make any sense to me. And so that will be a, a big focus for us. And we're going to be doing a nationwide campus tour starting the day after the election in Seattle and going for a whole month. We'll be in New York November 16th, and it will end December 2nd in Denver. And we'll be spreading this message around campuses and trying to really get a movement going that calls into question the, uh, the social license of the fossil fuel industry, the inevitability of continuing to burn fossil fuels. And that's the math we're gonna be doing. So. I see you walking towards me, so I probably should stop. Yeah, let's stop there. That's a lot. So, so let me recap a little bit, and then, and then I think that what would be productive is if the panel here focused it in a little bit, and then you guys start thinking about how we're gonna. What's the tag phrase on this poster? That's the first thing we're gonna think about. You know, there needs to be a call to action and some phrase, or that's combined. Um, so, but, but let me recap a little bit. Hear what you were saying. The campaign is against fossil fuel industries. It's about changing the social perception of fossil fuel industries. And it's about recruiting college students specifically to join that fight. So I'm, I think, I don't know, I, if we're making a recruitment poster or not, that's kind of how I think about it. A recruitment poster for college kids to join this fight. There's a lot of numbers. So that's one thing to think about. How many of these numbers do we want? Do we want these numbers on here? Um, do the math. Uh, I've tried to convince 350 not to call it do the math. <laughs> Um, uh, unsuccessfully so far. Um, and I think I'm not going to be successful. I think they're going to call it do the math. Um, and I think there's good things and bad things about that. But that's another thing to think about. If that phrase is the title, how is that, how do we deal with that on the poster? If that's going to be the call to action or whatever. Um, so, so, um, so that's, that's how I see it. That's the mandate. General recruitment poster, college students, divest. That's another potential thing we have to deal with. Um, all right. So how are we going to focus this in? Excellent. Here is a microphone. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I have actually, you might have to cut me off with the questions, Ed. Um, the first question I want to ask is, 
what is the delta? The, I, one one of the math equations that I'm I'm still trying to get my head around in the McKibben article is amazing, and the one sort of mathematical um, equation that is haunting me is the notion of the global warming we're experiencing being so far removed from anything nature oriented that the odds of it being nature oriented are more than all the stars in the entire galaxy. Um, but the the gigatons numbers that you presented and the numbers that um, the allowable amount of gigatons in the atmosphere and then the number of gigatons in the reserve. Um, I'm assuming that Exxon and Mobil and the other nations that are holding all of the carbon, um, that, that, that those reserves couldn't all be burned at the same time. And so I'm, I'm confused or unclear about the amount that's acceptable in the, in the atmosphere and the amount that is being held in reserves and, and why is that an issue? Um, and that's my first question. <laughs> I'll try and be, do you want to do all of them at once or? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But like, particularly with the point of like what we're going to focus on with this. Well, design. because that's, I think it's, it's really important for me to understand the inherent problem sure. in that. So if that's the issue that Exxon and Mobil, who are putting an enormous amount of lobbying dollars into keeping that there, I'm just curious as to why that, what is the inherent problem with that number? I think I'm going to get this, I think I'm going to be able to help. So basically, because their value as companies is based on having all of these fossil fuel reserves, they need to, they need to be burning them, and they are burning them quickly. And global demand for that energy is increasing. So, so that's the first bit, is the, the rate of usage is increasing. So that gets added a little bit. The other is that no matter when it happens, it's heating the globe at this alarming rate. And so um, it's not so much an issue of, like if, if tomorrow everything went up in smoke, we would be in a lot of trouble. But even if that happened over the course of many years, the cumulative effect is still the same. So um, the next step there being, we've got to create a different course than that one. Otherwise, we're going to be facing increased temperatures. And all I mean, but this is like capturing in a nutshell, like a really basic problem with climate change communications, which is the, the ideas are so complex right. and they require so much arcania to get at. So, so we got to find a way to simplify it, you know, and, and then have the people who are hooked learn more about it. So there's an, and I think 350 does a great job of explaining that. We need to get people in the front door with this design. So I think it needs to be almost instantly telegraphic for people to actually feel that sense of outrage right. from a brand positioning point of view. Um, but then my other question is just playing devil's advocate for one moment only to be able to really see what we have to combat. Why, what would Exxon and Mobil say in their defense for their um, ability to keep these reserves as they are, and what so what is what are we actually fighting here? Right. Well, the, so the CEO of Exxon was just asked about this, and presented with this information, and he said, it, it doesn't matter because humans will be able to adapt their physiology to cope with climate change. Oh, so it's like legitimate rape, essentially, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, yeah. So that's what he said. But then you have um, like BP, and before the Gulf oil spill, they spent all this money investing in solar and wind, so, but it, was all, it, it remained 2% of their products and they've scaled it back dramatically. So on the one hand, they've got, they've got all this data too, and arguably had it before we did, but that hasn't stopped, that hasn't shifted practices. Okay, and then my last question um, goes to the original creative brief that I was presented with in preparation for today, and then Edward's sense of the do the math being something that he feels, I think, a little bit on the fence about, as do I. And so my question is, essentially, if you're looking for something that is a little bit sexy, and that was one of the words in the creative brief, yeah. how does do the math dovetail with that? objective so the the u ultimate utility of the phrase do the math is if you picture this meeting with students and their boards of trustees at their college and getting up there and presenting the same numbers that I said to you and saying if I'm the student and you're the trustee do the math how is this supposed to get better 
how am I supposed to graduate from this institution and have a future if we don't start to change what we do right now? And so it's sort of the confrontational edgy aspect of do the math. That's one piece. Uh, the other thing we're dealing with it is to some degree, it's out there. You know, it, it, it was what was used in the Rolling Stone piece, and it has, um, it has a bit of that idiomatic thing going for it. So, but it, I agree, it, is, it doesn't fulfill everything as in terms of a phrase. Um, and I tend, I tend to think that's okay. I don't think there is, because of the complicatedness of climate change, there's not going to be a perfect phrase. Well, so there's not going to be a perfect yeah. phrase, but... Well, I'm not willing yeah. to accept that yet. Yeah, I'm not either, because, <laughs> because there's a perfect <laughs> phrase for this poster. That's true. There's a perfect phrase that's going to get people interested in it. And it has to be the phrase. I think ultimately we're going to find that we're going to have to condense the call to action in the phrase, in the tag phrase. So we're dealing with an impediment if that phrase is do the math. Because I, what am I going to do? Well, Once you do it. How yeah. do I do the math? Right. Like, where do I and go to do it? the math is really hard to understand. And I'm afraid that that could be off-putting and, and somewhat scary for people to want to do the other thing we heard which was people don't like math <laughs> i hate <laughs> sort math. Of a fundamental problem with it's it not fun <laughs> so do the math could be the, the title of the math. tour i mean that can be on right. the poster somewhere right but yeah so go ahead Tasha. well i think there you know when it comes to um talking about environmental issues there's always a huge um dilemma between um, the individual and the large issue. For example, I think that we're all here, to, you know, all of us here today are the beneficiary of fossil fuel. In some way, um, we're still gonna go to a gas station and fill up our tank. When the temperature gets really hot, I'm gonna go home and turn on my AC. So there's that kind of tension, I think, that, and, and, and I think this connection, you know, we all we're all frustrated by the by the issues that, that we're confronting, but yet at the same time, we're all directionless and lost. So for me, I'm more interested in not only do the math, but trying to understand how I am part of that math. Um, I, I think that, you know. I, I would say, that I would, in response to that, I feel like there's one danger that, that happens a lot in the environmental movement, which is putting the blame on us. So we walk around with this feeling of self-castigation, and like we have to change our habits. One of the things I like about 350 is it says, we need the government to create opportunities for us. That we can't just bear the burden ourselves. You know, we, it's about creating opportunity and getting a government to create opportunity, right? Well, or and increasingly, this industry. I, I think what we, the analogy we've been having is, it's like the president is holding a pillow and we're just punching him over and over again, asking for stuff, but the fossil fuel industry is just holding him back. Well, this is, a, this so. is an important thing we haven't got up on the board yet, and I think is interesting to think about as we move to this tag phrase, is one of the things that the fossil fuel industry is doing that we can that we can understand and get mad about is it screwing our democracy. Right. So I don't know if that's ultimately what we want to advertise. Screwing our democracy. So yeah. the big question I have is how do we what is the result that we what what are the criteria for success for us? So if we're looking at making an impact, if we're looking at sending a message, what do we want the end result to be? Yes, we want the amount of carbon in the atmosphere and the acceptable levels to be attained, but how can that happen in the most expeditious and most um, impactful way? Is it is it about getting the government to have regulatory, better regulatory issues? Um, I think about other industries where over the years there has been a fundamental paradigm shift, um, and that is um, the cigarette smoking industry and the seatbelt lobbies. So it's now against the law to not have a seatbelt on, and a lot of that came from kids telling their parents to put on their seatbelt because kids had heard about it so much that they then insisted that their the parents couldn't start driving without putting their seatbelt on because that was the behavior that needed to be changed. The other behavior was in, in inherent uh, with kids in seatbelts. And then now with cigarette smoking, where it's not as cool anymore. So how can we, what kind of behavior do we want to impact? Is it governmental? Is it about regulation? Is it about getting people into the streets? Is it about turning down your AC? I think for this poster, 
we want people to join 350's movement. Okay. And then once they join the movement, they'll direct them to what to do. And my experience with 350, they'll usually direct them towards petitioning for some specific policy point, whether that be um, stopping the Keystone pipeline, that's one piece of it, whether it's uh, creating a some kind of tax on carbon, which is a very difficult political hurdle because I just said the word tax. Um, you know, it's various things, but 350 is in charge. I think th for, our, for us today, our motivation is just to get people excited about the issue and then 350 will, will designate the specific policy concerns, but it's about policy. So if we are interested, if, if our ultimate goal is to get people by looking at this poster to join the 350 movement, how does Do the Math engage the audience? I'm sort of coming back to this divest idea. I see it. Is good. I see it in the sort of this World War II poster context of the kind of like individual action, but it's something that affects the greater whole. So that would be. I mean, that's that is the campaign hook. It's get these large endowments and pension funds to divest and you know create damage to okay. the industry that way. What do people think out there? Yes. So, so, so we got down with fossil fuel. That's one suggestion. Just straight up down with fossil fuel. Yeah. Um, I think your biggest concern is staying away from, you know, the bland and generic coming from probably the closest thing to your target audience. Um, that since the advent of like the green movement, uh, you know, I basically just tune everything out of here because it's just uh, at this point it's, it's the same regurgitated information being. Uh, spat out in the most cliched manner. So you really need to either simplify it incredibly, like oversimplify it, or just make something so radically different that people have to listen, regardless well, well, like, of what you're trying like to what? say. Like, so, so, so you're suspicious of the words like sustainability and green. I think a lot of people are. It's been overused, right? Yeah. But so what... I mean, it's all about like what you're trying to accomplish, but... Like as far as like recycling or like no, we're trying to change the perception of the fossil fuel industry. Well, you can't, like you said, you can't uh, put all the blame and guilt on the people, but you can't also expect people to just take their aggressions out on politicians. It's a you have to find a middle ground between what you can do and what you want other people to do for you. So okay, so uh, any 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 idea for a tag phrase or we gonna, how are we gonna jump from that? <laughs> wow. No, actually, just to refer back, the fossil fuel industry did know what they were doing. They did know, just as the tobacco industry, for years uh, they've known. As a matter of fact, they've been internally following the formula of the catastrophe that is unfolding in their own planning. They are accounting for the oceans to rise. They're accounting for um, the uh, food famines, all the rest of that. And they are now slowly coming around. So in a way, they are like, you know, the big red peril or the Nazi well, menace. So let's, let, to, as to, big red peril, right. To, 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 to the point, I mean, I guess let's, let's face this one basic question. In this poster, are we gonna focus on demonizing the fossil fuel industry? Or are we going to focus on something else, something that's that's not just about calling out an enemy, but about participating in something? Um, yes. Yeah, it's getting uh, the oil industry out of politics. That's it. I mean, how how does anything happen in this country? It's the politicians that make the decisions, and if they're backed by oil, then nothing's going to happen. If you elect people that are not backed by oil, things will happen. So, so what about something like? So, what about the How phrase? How about get, get the oil industry out of politics? I was just gonna say, get, write that one down. Get like out, that. oil industry out of our future or something. Because it's not just don't politics. Don't vote for oil. Oh, it's gotta be politics. Don't vote for oil. Don't vote for oil. Don't vote for oil. But, but that also that. So, don't vote for oil is a good. That's a good tag phrase. But it, it's um, we need something that's gonna invite people in too. So it's it needs to be like join. There needs to be a joining thing in here. There needs to be a sign up, you know, that kind of thing. Hey, yes. Yeah. Where'd this phrase, don't burn your future, come from? Well, John Santos came up with it in his head. I, 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 I would drop the Y from your, don't burn your future. Don't 
govern our future, you know. To I'd, I'd change it to don't burn our future, which you just did. <laughs> So if we did, so don't burn our future. We still need some kind of like thing at the bottom that said sign, go to 350 and sign up today or something like that. What, what about the phrase you know, we we are greater than oil? I really like the elegance of that we and then the carrot oil. Did, did other people like that? I like that. I just thought that it was already part of their campaign. It's not. It's just someone made a sign that way. They got their picture taken, so it's now also we math. own it. See, it keeps coming back to math. <laughs> Right, and that also is about math. So that, that, that in, a, in an effective way, kind of alludes to the title of this campaign without, make, without you know, falling into it. So I, Can yeah. I say one quick yeah, thing? Yeah. Going back to what the guy in the Bayview Farm shirt said, we were talking about this with some of the people who worked in the um, HIV AIDS movement and the, the work of ACT UP and their catchphrase, silence equals death. It was this like, whoa, this is a serious thing. And we talked about like what are the what are the things we've avoided saying so far in our cl in the climate movement because they seem too scary or too arresting and we just like don't want to go there. But how the act up and the HIV AIDS movement was able to say no, this is the time we've got to act now. So yeah, I mean there's a, a video up of 350s on the web called Fight of Our Times, and the question is is that too hyperbolic? Like, do we is you know that kind of feeling is what we want, but can you get there at a leap? Can you just say that and have people be invested in well, it? Well, how about join the fight of our times as a possible sub, you know, that that's the call to action at the bottom of the poster, join the fight of our times. Yeah, can you write that down? So l I think we should, I think we should actually vote at this point. On, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, I'm coming to you, yeah. I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, you talk about the green movement in the United States. Have you looked at Europe? I mean, they've changed. What do they say in their policies? Duh. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, well, we, we don't primarily work in the U.S. I, I think that's a great question, but um, I don't know what they say in their posters per se, but I think a lot of it was, um, like, a good example is in Germany. After the Fukushima disaster in Japan, the Germans uh, switched their entire electricity generation off of coal and onto primarily solar. Um, so there was a very rational argument that like we shouldn't do this anymore and there was they'd already gotten to that point where climate change was a public concern so they it was just a debate on policy whereas we're in the US still in this question of like well is it a big deal or not yeah but how do they get there So, so what's the phrase, the Green New Deal? Can you write that down? Uh huh. So, so linking the economics. There's a, a suggestion up here about some, some words we could use. I was thinking of the word hot, which is, can be sexy, and it's also a symptom. It's also a negative. So it's a negative and a positive. So somehow, I don't know what the phrase would be, but something with the word hot. Great. That's really cool. So you want to try to... Um, Summarize these, and we could take a vote and, and yeah, move so on to visualize. Yeah, I think we should we should decide on something at least provisionally. We can always revise it later. So yeah, go ahead, John. So we're, we're trying to operate hierarchically now. As you talked about before about having a campaign and then a um, sorry. So right, we have the word from the designer here. We're operating on this premise that there could be a subtext. So we earlier you were saying, do the math be the name of sort of the campaign? But we need we're going to focus on this the hierarchical like a first and second level first level being the message of the poster mm -hmm. and the second level being the message or the name of the campaign okay okay um and i guess there's a, there's a i guess is there a tertiary level where there's a call to action so there's the tag phrase the call to action and then the name of the campaign and the, the call to action can be embedded i suppose in the uh, I mean the name of the campaign can be embedded in the call to action um Sorry. okay Oh, just to say one thing, I guess sometimes I'm, I'm not used to this kind of process in terms of thinking it about campaigns in this way because I think we're missing the visual, which can influence the phrase. Right. So I don't know if there we're has... We're going to get to that. So, okay. so, we're, so the visual is not, this, okay. uh, this is obviously artificial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of time when you're designing, you'd be doing them both at the same time Right, because the second part of this could actually be right. the visual that then influences exactly. what happens. Exactly. So, so I'm eager to get there. Okay, yeah. So that's why I want to... I want to. We're, we're operating under the premise that the message... Uh, that's a great segue, first. yeah. yeah. I like Exactly. So, 
so looking up there, it looks like we have some. I like John's hierarchy thing. There's some phrases that that are good tag phrases, and there's some phrases that are um, are are more about the call to action. Um, so, so maybe maybe um, we John could put some uh, an asterisk next to ones that we consider worthy of voting on. Is that helpful? Because there's a lot of stuff. Are all of these uh, in the running? Yeah, they're on the right. Let's, let's okay. do raising the hands. But thing. for example, yeah. I think we could, we might want to put 350.org somewhere on here. And I'd then also. That's got to be on there. We yeah. got to put, so Diego go put. To go to 350.org. Yeah, yeah, go to the call to action. Go to 350.org. And, and then we can assume that these, the texts that are smaller are interchangeable. So you can put them behind any text. So it could say, screwing our democracy. And then underneath it say, go to 350.org, or it could say, the big red peril, join yeah, the movement, yeah, right. 350.org. So everything's, so inter sort of we should think the, about how the text is, inter thing, right? yeah. yeah, and everything's interchangeable. Yeah. Okay, so let's, okay, so let's vote on the main, does anyone get that? We're, so we're voting on the main phrase. But can we add, like, just add something to hot, like it's hot in here, or? Um, <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Yeah, I'm like, it's, it's getting, getting hot in here. <laughs> so take off all your clothes. <laughs> Too hot. hot. Just too hot. Too hot. I like too that. Too hot. With the number two. Yeah, number two. <laughs> like you're texting. Too hot, do the math. Right. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> too yeah. hot, do the math. Too hot, Can you do add the do the math to and that? Then a, and I then a line it, going underneath it and then do the math. Because the advantage to that is that it does incorporate this controversial but necessary um, campaign name. Yeah, I mean, we right. have to say with do the math. I think that we have to have that in right. this poster somewhere. So, so having a... Uh, Until we get 350 to change their mind. Yeah. Oh, I'm loving that. I would just say, uh, the phrase I, would just, say that. I would just say, um, like something like, it is too hot, or something like that. Like, it's too hot. Oh, come on. Like you know the hot. kids love swapping right, numbers like for something letters. Something simple <laughs> like that. I know. Come that's on. what makes it like, like if I saw that, I'd be like, oh, too hot. Like, what do you, come on. So that's <laughs> what I'm trying to say, you know, like. Yeah, there's, there's some other young people in the room. I'd like to get their opinion on that. What do you think about too hot, ladies? I think it's kind of ironic, the two, so I don't think you need to worry about it being like lame. <laughs> is ironic good and lame is bad? Can you update us on that? <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're, we're going to keep the, the, the too hot and the too, too hot. Um, all okay. right, it's really fun to see that the this is looking typography great. come together yeah, and start to great. express these things. Okay, hold on one second. We need to we save heard the document. Conscious fossil, is that another? Another recommendation. Good. We are greater than oil. Is it's not just oil. That's the uh, thing we struggle with. It's like it's all of it. So. Uh, that's true. Fossil, fuel, it, fossil fuel doesn't have the same resonance as a phrase. But could it be a series? So one poster says we are greater than oil. One says we are greater than. Coal, gas. Coal, coal and like we're and so it's, it's a, a series. It's a direction. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I really think we need to vote. Okay. We, we t <laughs> time is running out. We can go back to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a moratorium on uh, ideas for right now. Okay. Okay. Right, okay. So, All right. okay, don't, who yes, likes don't burn our future? A smattering of applause. Who likes two? A secondary. A secondary. Okay. So, so Maybe like, we could be part of the call to action. Maybe we could just put a little asterisk next to things, like, I don't know. Oh, that's good. Ooh. 50 or hot. Too, so like too hot that the people that go to the website are really hot if they're going to connect. Yeah, That's why I think it should. Right? I think they should go together if they're if you're going to be um, you know advocating for that. Okay. Wait. So you're saying take away the. So map it up with too hot. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just drag it down there for now, and we'll deal with the. Uh, the nuances. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. What about uh, the big peril, <laughs> big red peril? One vote. So someone's holding their votes for something good. So we're gonna find out what it is, or people <laughs> are still in, in confused. Screwing your democracy. Screwing our democracy. Two votes. So far, it's like two votes for each. Um, Tepid group, huh? Divest. You gotta vote for something. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. 
point? I, I think... Is okay, you either have to vote or give us a tagline. Uh, we're moving to the visual. We, you yeah, can't say that yet so until too hot vote wins. For too hot, that can be a winner. No, no visual <laughs> ideas yet. Yeah, don't yeah. Please don't fuel the future. Okay, we have another phrase. Please don't fuel the future. Okay. Well, you could also put up um, positive spin on fuel because you are fueling the movement. Fueling. Fuel the I'm movement. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fuel the movement? Fuel. I think that, I, yeah. I think that's problematic. I think, don't, yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess I shouldn't bias it, but. Yeah, I think the please is a little, uh, let's get that. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> if you have okay, to another comment back here. <laughs> Just to not lose the don't burn our future, because it's such a good phrase, the, the we are greater than oil is, to me, like one of the best things up there. And somehow, maybe those two connect in a way, too, yeah. uh, that um, I think that, that it's just graphically, we are greater than oil for me. That's my vote. Okay, who likes we are greater than oil? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Massive support. Massive. I vote for it, too. Uh, so, um, so we got to get we are greater than oil in there. Okay, Crowdsourcing. So Crowdsourcing, exactly. So it seems like screwing our democracy didn't work out so well. So let's, you know, we can get rid of that. There's some good stuff on the way. Right, exactly. We got good stuff on that. So it seems like, so, so we kind of like this, there's a kind of a confluence around um, we are greater than oil. It seems like it has to be on the poster somewhere. Um, but people also like don't burn our future and too hot has some fandom out there. Or did we so actually vote on too hot? I think so. Oh no, no too hot. I, Sorry, too hot. We did not, yeah. Okay, so that's also very popular. So, uh, sorry, uh, which yeah. what are we deleting again? Screwing our democracy. We're versioning. Screwing our democracy. We delete that. Big Wait. red peril. Get big, big red, red peril. peril out of there. Okay. Divest. Don't vote for. We did. We did vote on that, right? Divest. Don't right, vote that for. Got, yeah. That got, that got very excised. Weak showing. Yeah. Right. Weak showing. Get rid of it. It's good, but I, I don't think a lot of people. And that's know one of the, the things exactly. That's one of the things that can can take yeah, a works, specific yeah. iteration within the campaign. This is a more general Just, thing. So as they're doing, I think you guys understand where to go because maybe we should just move to the imaging thing. So we're going to keep a couple of them now. We start yeah. talking about exactly um, visual images, and I know there are some people calling for that. Um, what comes to mind with too hot? Is that how you want to do it? Like yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, I, I, maybe we should start at a more basic level and talk about visual style um, uh, because then we can fill that in, right? So um, uh, I, I'm not very good at thinking about this. So I could use some help from you guys. But, but I guess like the yeah. basics is, are, is it a single strong image? Is it a collage as was being suggested? Is it a person? Is it just the text? Uh, what do we think? Well, if we're looking at this on, cam on college campuses, what I would imagine is that it needs to be something that is identifiable from a distance. So I think that while collages might work well if you're looking online when you're sort of the sole viewer, you're looking at capturing the attention of a large group of people that might be looking at it from different distances. So I would think of something as single-minded as possible, my, my opinion. Viewable at a distance is definitely key. Yeah, what do you think, Natasha? Well, um, it, you know, if, if the effort is targeting um, fossil fuel industries, I think that having um, imagery, whether it's photographic or something perhaps more abstract or graphic, I think, will create a kind of direct link as to who and what we're targeting. And I think that creating that kind of very straightforward target up front is important. Is, are you imagining, so th it seems like you could make a poster that demonizes the fossil fuel industry. You could pay smokestacks or whatever, that range of visual imagery. Or you could depict the person that's supposed to act. Like one of the things about the World War II posters I liked is they depicted the person that we were supposed to be addressing and it's supposed to be motivated by this. Um, what do people think about that? Do, do we want an image of the person we're after here, which we've decided is college campuses, yeah? Uh, 
Right. So the comment here, I just have to repeat it for the um, webcast, <laughs> is that for, for this, we are greater than oil. We got to show people. We got to show. And perhaps population, not just one person. But yeah, that was the other thing I took from that. You're not talking about a single person. Right? Yeah, we. So, so in a sense, our visualization challenge for that one is how do you visualize we? Right? That's really, in a sense, the, the subject. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. So someone smoking a tailpipe. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe I'll I'll just try to repeat ones and yeah. But that's one person though, right? So what do we got? That, uh, language is your most important weapon here. Um, I would just like have whatever you use across the whole board, and that way people will see it from a distance. And then underneath that, make that really bold. Then a contrasting background that could be more complicated to flesh out what you're. Uh, trying to say like and I think one of the most important things is uh this can't just be like the green initiative we need a a cohesive eradication of excess materialism and uh you know a cohesive movement in not only America but you know the world it has to be one big thing so are you talking about gotta keep to like kind of simple imagery yeah. to are you to talking about linking that? it up to occupy or something like that Okay, I have an idea back here for a visual. Give us an idea, not the direction. A, a ballot. A vote. A voting ballot. A voting ballot. So we got to keep track of these ideas somehow. A little cliche, but what about an earth? Awesome. Who said it, earth? Did I hear earth? Yeah. I mean, okay. It's a little cliche. I, I, I have a vote against the earth. I have a strong predilection Making. against putting the earth for the reasons I stated in my preamble. Um, I have a cliche maybe, but in the other direction, but I'm thinking, Werner Herzog was brought up before, and then I just can't get the image out of my mind from Lessons of Darkness, where the, just the fire, the flame of the oil in, in a dead landscape, that I think could be at least some starting point can as you a do visual. Can you do some image research on, on oil, oil field fires? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Right, so fire, awesome. burning. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, in terms of a... You know, making some aspect of, of the oil industry, you know, really nefarious, like like uh, 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 be clouds of black smoke, or uh, a barrel of oil, which we hear a lot about, uh, the price of a barrel of oil, somehow morph that with um, something really hot, and, uh, like the sun, and that that image doing something bad to some a bunch of people, all of us. Also, like, to get people motivated. Yes, maybe we should focus, since we had sort of a creative direction on the we, to focus on how to represent this we for a few minutes, just some ideas of how to represent the collective. Also, Ed, to confirm, and right now I have a smoking... And then we could, w we could talk about heat, how to represent heat and burning, right? Does anybody have ideas for representing the collective? One, one thought I'd like to ask the audience to consider is the notion of very strong movements tend to have a piece of iconography that is associated with them. And so it becomes very telegraphic. You can see that iconography and you don't need to even see any other words. I mean, think about even our American flag. And what's interesting about the we are greater than oil is that there is a symbol embedded in this phrase. And so I'm wondering if there's a way to somehow personalize it or customize it in a way that it becomes associated with this movement. And it could be as simple as putting it in a circle, or it could be something that's more clever than that, because we have people here that are more clever than that to, to help, but just putting right, it out there. But some kind of signature to make that distinctive, but then that anybody could it represent it. Right. right. Yeah. That's because it's sort of an Otto Neurath kind of thing. Yeah. Right, so the idea here is stacks of... Right. I mean, one, one thing that... that uh, I mean, 350's been around, right? And they have a kind of look and feel already. It might be helpful to pull that up 
um, to get away from this for a second, just pull up 350's webpage for a second to start thinking about that. And one thing I'll say about it is I get the most inspired by 350 when I see people multiplied. They do a lot of that where they, where they say, you know, they sort of, they, they focus on an individual and say, we have to stand together. And all the individuals start to multiply. They do that in videos a lot in your graphic animation. So I think this we thing is really strong. Um, and and um, where can we go on your website to see something like that maybe? There, how about that initial video? Well, we, let's take 90 seconds to watch this video. Right, okay, and it's going to take them a, f a few right, seconds to, to bring it up. Let's go. Does anybody else have ideas for visuals? We, we have this sort of s stack of people, sort of graphic representation of people, almost like typography. So let's play this. Okay, okay. Uh, no sound. Um, well, that's okay. You get the point. Fields, oil fields on fire. This is a, what they do a lot of. They do a lot of um, uh, kind of iconogra like iconography, where the, where people are represented as as, as almost like shapes. Um, so I don't know if that helps us, but uh, this is very typical. They have a new video out now, the one I was talking about, "Fight of Our Times," that does something similar. But I don't know. How do people feel about that? Is that too generic? Yeah. The thing I keep thinking about is whether in the on the other side of the greater than symbol, is it like an executive of the oil industry? Like, is it a barrel? That's a little bit confusing to me. Which is why we c we sh we could either spend more time on that or ignore it and spend more time on the we because we can visualize the we. But um, it's not just that we don't like oil it's that we think that there's an industry that's a problem that, that visualizing that is a little difficult right, so we are greater than oil. Uh, the, the thing about we are greater than oil the, what that does is it's very efficient about saying look it's not we're not against oil and all the benefits of fossil fuels given us I and mean, we're enjoying numerous products made with petroleum right now it's about we can't put the interests of oil ahead of us for our future right so that has to be conveyed somehow. It's a very difficult problem. Um, I mean, the, the phrase itself conveys it. Yeah, go ahead. Not just oil companies either, right? Right. And we're, so we're, we're talking about making a series. Bad actors. You mean rogue states and everything else. You know, I don't think it's Yeah. I like the image of... Yeah, I'm worried about that too, about cliches and so on. So did, did you, yeah, well, yeah. this is a little out of turn now. I was answering image for too hot. I was thinking of oil derrick with thermometer going into the earth and the top of the thermometer blowing out. And um, in the sense of the World War II posters that there's, you know, uh, derrick that's prominent and then there are others going back and each of them, the... Uh, Thermometer is blowing out. Okay, we, we got, we're writing that down. Yeah, so it's thermometer well, one idea that just came to my head um, was, I don't know if this is good, but the, was so to get the we and the we're greater than and the oil all in the same picture is somehow a gru the we surrounding something in the middle that represents oil and sort of like looking at it, like condemning, I don't know. The, like. What about like just a scene of um, a bunch of bikes, yeah. like a photograph of a Manhattan street yeah. with a bunch of people riding bikes next to like a big bus or something like that, like some kind of pedestrian photography, like uh -huh. it's everyday photography. Uh-huh. Uh, right. That, that's, I think that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't know. O or the image of a boardroom where it's like there's a bunch of people who look like, you know, the people, folks, s encircling one person who's like the oil industry person who has to kind of answer to their demands. Like that, that could be a way to do that encircling thing. And it's also what we're asking uh, students to do. It's like go meet with your board of trustees and ask them to divest. So that image of like multiple people asking one powerful person yes, who's got a little lapel that's like Exxon, you know? That doesn't really work. I think the focus should really be on the we, like you mentioned. And so if you want to fit all of it on one sign, most protest ha protesters have signs. So putting it on a sign with people backing it behind and maybe like, fire, you know, indicating that we're above the fire. Human beings should always be placed 
above anything else and perhaps you know incorporating fire or something like that in the background but i think you want to get everything in one shot and you want to keep it as simple as possible because college students are also really busy so you just want to read something for two seconds and so just keeping that image really simple as well you were, sorry, you were saying that uh, some, some people holding a picket sign? Like maybe one person holding a picket sign and a bunch of people in the background. Because like we're all a group. Ooh. You're talking about the movie There Will Be Blood. Yeah. The, the image of the uh, that's right. That's another oil derrick kind of image, right? Is there a way to you've been doing image research over there? Is there a way to start throwing images out? We're we're building a folder, and okay. then when we're done, we're gonna email it to him. But maybe we are you pretty close? Yeah, because we need to. I kind of we need to start moving towards making a visual poster. We're gonna get people out of here and by you know three thirty or so. So we're okay. looking at you know temperature okay. rising. It just won't be a complete folder then. Cool. Okay. Oh, that's that's so good. Get that that. Yeah, I mean the poster looks really great with nothing on it in a way. <laughs> just the type. Why don't you bring that to the to the foreground? The the black poster behind is sort of done. That's sort of like where we're starting. Is kind of great. I mean, we could type. we could talk about the you know what Debbie mentioned about personalizing it or Ooh. or creating a signature. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of has <laughs> to be beautiful, right? <laughs> we should version that one. My, um, my only issue with the type only thing is it feels like an American apparel ad. <laughs> oh, come on, it's Helvetica. Well, Crate and Barrel. Helvetica's great and all, but I don't know. International style. Come on. Well, is it a bad thing or not? But I just feel like a, it just seems more f stylistically influenced in a way. It just feels more isolating, I feel like. <laughs> okay, so John, you had an idea about texture. What could we use? Uh, maybe can you go on the our board to the left and then version out, like just do a bunch of different versions of we lo we are greater than oil in different fonts, so everyone can see the different voices that start to come out. Maybe that's as far as we get today, but I don't think it's sufficient just to type. I'll just let me weigh in on that as my personal opinion, because I think it doesn't do enough. It makes it still cerebral, um, and it puts it in this. Um, and the, the design language is very kind of, um, I don't know, elite. refined, elite, right, elite, right, exactly. Elite. And so, I mean, a s like the easiest fix so far that, that I think has come up is, is maybe just rendering an image of protest in the back of it. So there's some sense of momentum or movement, yeah. So there were a group of placards in hierarchy, bigger. You don't have to show people, just placards. It will look like a protest. Mm -hmm. so, so repetition of placards is right, yeah. that's a good idea. Any, anybody else have some something to throw in here while we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we already transferred over the image drive. Yeah, you want to so. connect to people, so I think you need more than words. You need imagery, because if you're connecting with young people, also you want to personalize it like they did in the World War II ad. They really did do that. So I think we should keep with that vein, um, because you want to make it personal. If people don't think personal, then they don't join, typically, if they can't relate to it. So. Yes, sir. I think it shouldn't be too like aesthetically based because then it seems, you know, then it loses its value. But on the other hand, if you just have the pure, just like we want like global warming to end, then people won't join that either. So it has to be it has to be catchy but uh, authentic in the end. Natasha, what do you think? Because you're, I mean, yeah. What do you? I'm just curious what you think. Well, I, I'm I'm just 
wondering that you know the the, the focus on we i think that we bi we're bigger than oil i think the message itself is clear so i think what we're trying to do using um images or pictograms of people i think in a way is like doing illustration they're trying to illustrate a message that's already very strong so i'm already, already in the words exactly it's already it's there's un unnecessary you know like uh, crowds or protests like uh, i'm just thinking is it necessary where should we try to juxtapose the message with something that's jarringly the opposite or different you know i'm just thinking so uh, like what like uh you mean it's a good point uh, that is a good point I, I i think it's a very strong point i still think we need to speak to and again maybe we don't get to it today i still feel like we need to speak to this thing of people need to feel inspired to to, to join you know and i think for right now i get a strong message i intellectually process it but i don't know that i get the impetus to join i need to feel like i'm part of something so that part of something has to come somehow it's, it's but it is in terms of a so single image, I, I like that. Yeah, I like that as a single image. The best ever. But they all look different. You know, every state and county has their own. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. What do you think about that, Natasha? We already yeah, have a right. The the feet behind the curtain. What do people think about that, the vo voting booth idea? Well, what I like about voting booth is that it suggests an action, and it's a pretty kind of the ultimate, you know, action, and it's, an, it's the necessary action without being too um, illustrative. I, I like that, and it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point, too. <laughs> He's making the point for the webcast that people already know this, and we have to move beyond that. I'm, I'm wondering if there's anything in creating some type of pictogram with this phrase in some way. And there seems to be an, a, something embedded in the, we have a greater sign. And then rather than the word oil or fuel, maybe it's the increase sign because there's something about the increase in the world's temperature and the Earth's temperature. So maybe there's some sort of code that, a visual code that we can create that w can also help to get people's attention, even if it's the we greater than and then the uptick sign. Just something there. What's the uptick well sign? Just for the increase in temperature. Oh, so the, 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 bar the, the ticks on a thermometer actually, like li vi literally drawn out. No, I was thinking of you have the greater than sign and then an upside down V for the uptick, meaning the increase in temperature. If there's some some something